What is red tide? How does it affect you? How does it affect your family, friends, or place of business? What do you do during red tide? Ever since 1947, scientists have been asking these questions. Let's look into what makes up red tide and why it's causing so much fuss. First off, red tide is a phenomenon in our oceans commonly referred to as an HAB. And no, that does not stand for hot and bootylicious. It means harmful algal bloom. The red tide affecting Florida's coastline is a marine algae known as Carina brevis. It produces a harmful neurotoxin called brevetoxin. Do you see that discoloration in the water? That's red tide. Normally, there is always a low concentration of Carina brevis in the water. When there is a very high concentration, this is known as a bloom. The brevet toxins from the bloom contaminate the water and have very adverse effects on the environment and the local wildlife. These toxins paralyze the central nervous system of fish swimming in the contaminated water. Birds and marine mammals that eat these fish are poisoned by the neurotoxins as well and shortly die. How often does red tide occur? Every month? No, not that red tide. These harmful algae blooms occur almost every year around late summer and early fall. They are most common off the central and southwestern coast of Florida between Clearwater and Sanibel Island. It is hard to tell what exactly causes a red tide bloom. Scientists have been searching for answers to many of the mysteries of these harmful algal blooms. With further research, we will discover more about the cause and effects of Carina brevis on Florida's coast. How does red tide affect you? Let's see how Nancy is doing on her day at the beach. Even while standing on the shore, Nancy notices something is not quite right. Her throat feels dry. Something in the air is tickling her nose. Her eyes begin to water. At first she is alarmed. But don't worry, that's just the brevet toxins. Breathing in these toxins causes coughing, sneezing, and teary eyes. If you have a respiratory problem like asthma, you should avoid patches of red tide. Nancy is asthmatic, and she knows her asthma is triggered by respiratory irritation. Because she is experiencing these symptoms, she should leave the beach and seek air conditioning immediately. Not to worry though, the brevet toxins are not life-threatening and the symptoms will stop shortly after you leave the beach. Wearing a particle filter mask may help alleviate some of the symptoms as well as make a stylish beach accessory. See, now Nancy can enjoy her day at the beach. Somewhat. Swimming in red tide is not exceedingly harmful. The most you may experience is skin irritation and burning eyes. If you are prone to skin irritation, you probably should not go into the water. If your skin does start itching, get out immediately and thoroughly rinse in fresh water. See how helpful Nancy's friends are? Note, swimming with dead fish is not advised. Who else is affected by red tide? Tourism services are very important to this community. No, no, not those types of services. This is Mildred. Mildred owns a charter boat company. Normally her boats take tourists out on long, fun-filled expeditions where much alcohol is consumed and many lunches are lost. But today, no one has booked a day of merriment on one of her boats. You see, red tide is blooming, causing great discomfort to many beachgoers. The once crowded beaches and marinas are now empty, which means Mildred is losing business. What about Mildred's neighbor, Betty Sue? Betty Sue is a real estate agent. She sells many lovely houses and condos to many lovely people. However, during a red tide bloom, she is having trouble renting out her beach houses and condos. Fewer tourists are willing to stay on the beach when the brevet toxins are so thick in the air. Many others, just like Mildred and Betty Sue, are losing business because of the red tide. This causes a dead break in the economy of the coastal area. Businesses suffer many losses and some people even lose their jobs. As you can plainly see, not just your day is ruined by red tide. So what should Mildred and Betty Sue do? Proper education. Many tourists don't know much about red tide. 
If hotels and restaurants provided better information about Red Tide and helped to clear up the misconceptions about it, more tourists would stay in the area and the economic downturn would not be so harsh. Some people are concerned with eating fish during a Red Tide bloom. Mildred just caught a fish and wants to share it with her friends Betty Sue and Nancy. Should they eat it? Sure. The breve toxins are not absorbed into the meat of the fish and therefore cannot harm you. However, it is not advised to eat the guts of freshly caught fish or of dead fish found lying around. Clams, oysters, and scallops are not safe to eat and should never be consumed when freshly caught during a red tide bloom. They are prone to cause neurotoxic shellfish poisoning. The risk is so high that shellfish beds are closed during a red tide bloom and are not opened up again until the water is clear. But what about restaurants or the local market? Are those fish and shellfish safe to eat? Absolutely! In fact, 80% of the seafood that Americans eat is not from the U.S. at all. Restaurants and supermarkets usually do not serve fish caught fresh from the area. So please, do not hesitate to buy your favorite seafood meal from a local restaurant. It seems Nancy, Mildred, and Betty Sue have learned a lot about Red Tide today. Being prepared and using good judgment helps make a day at the beach more enjoyable for everyone, even when Red Tide is in bloom. Also, try to support your local restaurants and tourist attractions so no one's day is ruined by the harmful algae bloom. Together we can prevail over Red Tide and make a brighter future for all.